Sid, thanks for all you do for Palm Beach County. I really mean that. I had the great privilege of working with Sid and his team in 2004 when I chaired the Bush campaign in the southeastern United States, which after the Democrats nominated John Kerry, meant Florida, because the rest of the South was gone. When I, when I was first given the position, you know, they would send me to Arkansas, they'd send me to Louisiana, maybe a little bit North Carolina, but once they nominated John Kerry, that was it. I pretty much camped out in Florida. You may remember we had a little close election here in 2000. <laughs> and we were like generals refighting the last war, and, and uh, we had the chads and all that kind of thing. So Sid and I became friends during that period. And I, I want to thank uh, all of you here in Palm Beach County, but also by association, the great people of Florida for not only uh, re-electing George W. Bush in 2004 and not only giving not just this state but I think the nation one of the greatest leaders and one of the finest public servants uh, in America today in Marco Rubio and I, want to thank you I, uh, I came down here in June of 2009 I was in Orlando and uh, I was asked to speak to the Conservative Republican Women's Club. They were having their state convention, and it was Marco Rubio at breakfast, me at lunch, and Dick Morris at dinner. So it was, uh, it was kind of a moderate kind of a deal, moderate to liberal uh, line of speakers. And I don't normally get up at you know, 7 a.m. to hear somebody else speak when I you know, landed at 11 o'clock and you know, probably changed planes twice that day, but. Dennis Baxley, I don't know if anybody in the room knows Dennis. I, good, I'm so glad to hear that. He's a dear friend of mine. He was on the board of the Christian Coalition for many years here in Florida. He was actually chairman for a while. I've known Dennis for a long time. And he was, I think, speaker pro tem under Marco when Marco was speaker. I think that's right. And I believe he was Marco's roommate. And uh, he sent me an email and said, hey, I saw you're going to be speaking. You really need to get up and hear this guy speak. And so I did. I got up at 7 a.m. and I came down and it was a room about this size. And it was a crowd about this size. And I'm sitting in the back of the room. And, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years. I mean, I walk into a state legislative chamber and I can go him, her, him. And in 10 years, those three will go statewide. I mean, you just know. You know, I mean, if you've been breeding horses for 30 years, you can walk into a stable and you can go, that one. And, uh, and I sat in the back of that room and, you know, at that moment, Charlie Crist had, what, six or nine million dollars? He had the entire Republican establishment behind him. Every special interest in this state was shoveling money at him. He was ahead in the polls by probably 30 points. I think Marco had 40 points. I think Marco had $300,000 or something, and I sat in the back of the room and I listened to him. And I was so grateful to Dennis Baxley because I went home and I told my wife, Joanne, I said, we're going to max to this guy. And I said, and the, the only thing that's so, he is one of the most impressive individuals I have ever seen in, in all my years in politics, and I said, it's just too bad this guy didn't have a snowball's chance <laughs> of winning this race. But you know, that's what people are hungry for. You know, they're sick and tired of the pollsters and the entrenched interests and the powerful telling them who to be for. They want authenticity. They're willing to back somebody that all the so-called smart people say can't win if they share their values and if they have the moral courage to speak out and aren't afraid to endure what Shakespeare called the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune that come with standing up for what's right. Um, I want to thank Melissa and Tammy and Janine for all their great work. Uh, appreciate all you guys are doing here in Palm Beach County. Uh, Janine called me up and she said, Ralph, do you believe in free speech? And I said, yes, I do. And she said, well, will you come to Palm Beach and give a free speech? <laughs> I said, well, if, 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 you can, 
if you can schedule it in January or February, I might show up. I don't know if you guys know it or not, but I grew up in Miami, and my parents both grew up in Miami. My parents grew up in Miami in the 30s and 40s. They actually went to high school with Bob Graham. He was one year ahead of them, so they're stingerees. And uh, I guess my sister went to Palmetto. I would have gone to Southridge if we had stayed. And uh, I still have season tickets to the Miami Dolphins, I'm embarrassed to say. <laughs> we were here when they won the Super Bowls. And uh, so my parents grew up here. Uh, my family on both sides are from South Florida. And I really love this state. And I appreciate all that you've done and the national leaders that you've helped uh, propel to the, to the highest levels. Of, of the national civic conversation. I think the finest governor in America in either party in the last decade was Jeb Bush. I think he did I don't think we've heard the last of him yet, but, but right now, I know I'm preaching to the choir, so to speak, but I really wanted to come here tonight as a friend and somebody who has labored in the vineyards with you and, and sweated and toiled and prayed and bled in many battles with the conservatives in this state over a long period of time and, and really challenge you that as many great things as you've done in this state and as many people as you've helped elect like Jeb and, and Marco and Alan West and, and I know there will be more the eyes of America will be on Florida again in 2012. Oh, yes. Because it is absolutely critical that we carry this state uh, for whoever the eventual Republican nominee is. Because I believe there is no way to defeat Barack Obama. I don't see any scenario that Obama can be defeated without carrying Florida. Absolutely. And, I think if you do your job in Florida, and not just you, but we at Faith and Freedom Coalition, which is my grassroots uh, public policy organization, will be working very closely with you, and I'll talk a little bit about that and what our plans are. Uh, you know, one of the interesting uh, trivia fun facts to know and tell is that from the founding of the Democratic Party in the early 19th century through 20... 08, no Democrat has ever been elected president from the time of Andrew Jackson until today without carrying at least three southern states. And because if you do the math, it's just very difficult. If you get blanked in the South, in 2000 when I worked on the first Bush campaign, the 14 states of the South, which are the states of the, the 11 states of the Old South, plus Oklahoma, West Virginia, and Kentucky. Those 14 states in 2000 had 163 electoral votes. Because of the population growth and the movement, the demographic movement from the snow belt and rust belt to the sun belt, and because states like Texas and Tennessee and Florida don't have an income tax, and by the way, we're going to keep it that way. Yeah. Um, because of that, by 2000, and uh, uh, four after the reapportionment, those 14 states had 173 electoral votes. As a result of the reapportionment that we've just gone through in 2011, those states will have 180 electoral votes. So if, if Barack Obama comes out of the South, including Florida, with your, what, 29 electoral votes? 29 electoral votes, okay, <coughs> keep in mind that whoever the eventual Republican nominee is needs 90 electoral votes more than John McCain got. That's the magic number. So if that nominee wins Florida's 29, North Carolina's 15, and I think Virginia's 14, I think it's 14, then, you know, you can do the math. That's two-thirds of what you need. That's, you know, 59 or 60 of the 90. In order to win, coming out of the South, down 180 electoral votes, Barack Obama would have to carry 77% of the 
of all the remaining electoral votes in the rest of the country. It's never been done in American history. So even though everybody talks about all the states, and of course Ohio is critical, but here's another interesting fact. I was in Tampa on election night 2004. I was pre-positioned, as were other people in every major county in the state, in case we had a repeat of 2000. Fortunately, thanks to your hard work, uh, we didn't have that problem. And we knew by 9 o'clock we were going to win Florida, even though the, the networks wouldn't announce it for a while. But you may remember, we had to stay up late to see what happened in Ohio. Yeah. Now, I knew by 11 o'clock that we were going to win Ohio, because I was in touch with our team out there, and we knew we were going to be fine. But you may remember that Carrie wouldn't concede. Mm -hmm. right. And I don't know if you know it or not, but to this day, uh, CBS News has never called the 2004 election. <laughs> I'm not kidding, that's literally true. They just never called it. You know, they didn't like the outcome, so they just never called it. Uh, so our victory party, you know, in Tampa got truncated. I just came down and said a few words. We didn't really get to celebrate until the next day. But because of the fact that Ohio has lost two seats, and Florida has gained two, and Georgia gained one, and Texas gained four, and North Carolina gained one, and I could go on. If you give Barack Obama the carry map plus Ohio, he still loses. Still loses. Now, I'm not prepared to concede Ohio. We're going to go up there and we're going to fight uh, like cats and dogs, but I'm just telling you how significant what you do, and also by association North Carolina and Virginia does, because I really believe if we can carry a solid South, and we darn sure ought to be able to, yes. given this administration's abysmal record, I, don't think, I, I genuinely don't think he can be reelected. And, and let me tell you, they know it. They know it. I don't, I don't know what's going on here in Florida. I, I'd like to, Sid, maybe you can give me some intel, but in, in North Carolina right now, which he carried by 14,000 votes four years ago, they already have 50 field offices in the state of North Carolina today. They have three offices in Wake County alone, which is Raleigh, the state capital. Last time in 04, they only had one field office in Raleigh. They are flooding the zone in Virginia. See, they know. And uh, it doesn't matter what the gallop is from day to day. Just trust me, just ignore the polls. Because they're going to be up, they're going to be down. In the end, this election is going to be extremely close. I don't know that we're going to know on election night. In any vibrant democracy that is consistently renewing itself, every election is the most important election of our lifetime. Because we're determining the course of a free nation made up of free, free men and women. But in this particular case, other than 1980, I can't think of a time in my life where I really believed an election would decide the direction of the nation and the planet.